now, as always, we will have the reading of the Lord's commandments. All right, let's go over to Exodus 20, pick it up at verse 1. Exodus 20, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless to take of his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. All right, let's go over to Ecclesiastes 12, pick it up at verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil. All right, let's go over to Revelations 22, pick up verse 13. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. All right, so there we had to read the Lord's commandments and, you know, they are called commandments. They are called laws. That means that they are not to be compromised or broken. They are not a request. They are commandments. So I want to say happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. And today we are going to look at a lesson titled, The Fruit of Lies, Satan's Doctrine. The Fruit of Lies, Satan's doctrine. And this lesson deals with, like I said in the title, lies. Most of the world have what they think is Christianity, but in fact, what they're dealing with is lies, deceptions. The book warned us about another Jesus that they was going to bring to you. The book warns us about them using his name and coming in his name. You know, Satan's greatest achievement is to make us think that he is a fairy tale and that he is an entity with horns and a pitchfork, you know. That's not correct in the book. Also, the scripture tells us that the whole world had been deceived by Satan. He is a liar and the father of it. That's what the book tells us. So we're going to look this up and we're going to see how this deception came about. Because it's very subtle, but yet very, very, very effective. The scripture said that he deceived the whole world. It means that the whole world has been deceived. So let's pick this up. We're going to start this out in Revelations. Chapter 12, verse 7. Revelations 12, verse 7. All right? 
Go ahead. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So if there's war, that means there's no peace, right? Right. And this is going on in heaven. But the scripture's telling us that the dragon fought, that's another name for Satan, and Michael fought. We're going to see the outcome of it. Go ahead. Eight. And prevailed not, neither was there place found any more in heaven. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So he just gave us all of his names. He's called a dragon, a serpent, devil, and Satan. Go ahead. What did he do? Which deceiveth the whole world. Is that an absolute or is that not an absolute? Absolute. And we know this, you know why? Because look at what time of year it is, okay? Now, these holidays or folly days, whichever one you want to call them, are practiced all over the world. How can you have an individual in China or Japan or France, Spain, Africa, all have this same custom hmm. with someone all the way on the other side of the world in Australia and South America. All speak different languages, different cultures, different people, but yet they have the same customs and doctrines. How is that if the whole world is not deceived? Go ahead, finish that. End of nine. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So he was cast out, and all of the third of them angels was cast out with him. And they was cast to the earth. Do you, stink, do you think he stopped creating deception and division? We know that he didn't because the first thing he did when he got... In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve was made, what did he do? He deceived the woman. Hmm. And contrary, we're going to uncover a lot of lies today. Contrary to what is believed, they did not eat an apple. I know we got an apple on the, on the thing. That's just to get your attention. What they ate was the fruit of lies. You know a tree by the fruit that it bears. If it bear lies, then it is an evil tree. Because that's the fruit that is bearing. Now, what happens when you eat that fruit? You don't eat the fruit with your mouth. You eat it with your ears. Because when the Lord approached him, he said, who told you that you were naked? That implies a conversation was taking place. Hast thou eaten of the tree that I told you not to eat of? There was no apple, no pear. It was the words that he spoke that they digested with their understanding. And his MO is that he mixes lies with the truth. He will give you a little bit of truth and then flip it and give you a whole bunch of a lie. Yes. That is his MO. And we're going to see that through this, that through this lesson, this is part one. There is a part two of how he operates, and he has not changed his operation. You know why he hasn't changed? Because it's still working today. Still working today. But let's keep going. Did we finish that? Yes. Go to Exodus 20. Pick it up at verse 1. Now, the Lord gave us these instructions, and we are going to read them. Because we can never read the commandments too much. Okay. Mm -hmm. As long as we're breaking them, we need to read them daily. Okay. Yeah, Exodus 20, verse 1. Go ahead, brother. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So you're not supposed to have any images of anything. Not of Jesus, not of Mary, not of Peter, not of Paul. Not a cross, 
not a six-point star. Mm. Nothing. Because the Lord didn't command us to do these things. No images of anything. Go ahead. Five. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. So you're not supposed to bow down yourself to them, nor serve them. Service is work. Meaning that you're not supposed to work for these things. Now the whole world have been working all year to come to one day. So that it can celebrate this one day and the customs that go along with it. When you work for something, you serve it. Go ahead. Middle of five. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. What kind of God is he? A jealous God. Jealous God. You know what a jealous man is like? Well, imagine what a jealous God is like. And we're going to see some of the things that he's going to reveal to us about how he feels. And we need to pay attention to this. Go ahead. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So all of the iniquities that we commit, you know what our error is? That we turn around and teach that to our children. And we corrupt them into the third and fourth generation. That's why he extended that out. If you don't believe that that is true, ask yourself, look in the mirror and ask yourself, why are you here in this land? Because your forefathers continued to break his laws. And they got carried away into captivity, not just in this land, but in every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people. And the condition of them is the same in every country. But that's another lesson. Go ahead. Did we finish that? Six. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So if you want mercy, what do you do? Keep, keep his, his commandments. commandments. But he said something previously. He said the people who hate him break his laws. You see? So anybody come to you talking about the commandments ain't no more? They hate him. And they are liar and the truth is not in them. The books say that. Go to Deuteronomy. 13, pick it up at verse 1. Deuteronomy 13, verse 1. You got it? Yes. Deuteronomy 13, verse 1. All right, go ahead. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass. So he's warning us, right? Mm -hmm. There'll be a prophet or a dreamer of dreams. It's always somebody want to tell you about their dream. They also got a, a, fa a famous speech, I have had a dream. But the person that made that speech was actually quoting Moses. It wasn't his dream. So, but if a person come to you, a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, or any person, and ask you this, go ahead. Near the top of two, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. So, the Lord already told you, thou shalt not serve any other gods, right? But this person will come to you, and he'll say, let us go after other gods. But they're not going to say it like that. They're going to ask you a specific question about a false doctrine. Are you coming to Christmas dinner? Are you coming to church on Sunday? Are you going to come to the Easter celebration? Now, these are customs and practices that the whole world take part in. But we're going to reveal the origin of these practice in these days and the customs. And we're going to see that they ain't got nothing to do with the book. Because not one of them commandments said anything about any of those days. But continue on, bro. Three, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. So don't hearken to him, right? Go ahead. Or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with see, all your heart. See, the Lord is going to send this to you to prove you. Whether you love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. See, too many times when we're in these situations, people try to give you a gift. 
or they try to provoke you to participate. And then you leave the situation feeling guilty, feeling bad. This is something we have to watch. But go ahead. To know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments. Wait, he goes, he said it again. Walk after him, fear him, and keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. What should happen to him? Shall be put to death. Now, we don't kill people did nowadays, but back then that's what they did. Mm -hmm. But you know what we do kill? We kill that doctrine with the word of God. Mm -hmm. That is how we do it. See, they killed them physically, but when we kill the doctrine, we save souls. You know how that scripture, that scripture says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free? Yeah. That's what the word of God does. Yeah. Hmm. Free you from lies, from deception, and from death. We'll finish that up. Go ahead. Near the top of five, because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. What is his motivation? To turn you away from the Lord your God. Go ahead. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. To thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. So this is what you're doing when you deal with it. You put away the evil that's in the midst of the whole world. Go ahead. Six. If thy brother, the so son. If thy brother, these are close people, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom. Wait a minute. The wife of your bosom. Any of these people. Because guess what? These are the people that's going to come at you. With that strange fire. And I said that on purpose. With that strange doctrine. What's going to happen? Middle of six. Or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly. Wait a minute. My thing is why you got to try to entice me secretly. Ain't that Satan's M.O.? Yeah, have God said? You know, good and well he said it. Go ahead. Saying, let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known. Go ahead. Thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you. Go ahead. Nigh unto thee or far off from thee. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other end Why of the earth. Why would the Lord say that if the whole world was not deceived? It don't matter who it is. They could be very close to you. Anybody from one end of the earth to the other. I suppose a hearken. Go ahead. Eight. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. So he does two things, right? Now we're going to see that the Lord is telling us, tell us to do the very same thing that he is going to do. Mm -hmm. He said, don't consent, so don't be feeling bad about this situation. Don't consent to it. Don't hearken, mean don't listen. Go ahead. Neither shall thine eye pity him. And don't feel sorry for him, because you have corrected him. Because when you do that, you're condoning what they're doing. Mm. Go ahead. Neither shalt thou spare. And don't spare. So that means that when this situation come upon you, the Lord is charging us to inform them. Don't spare them the word of God. Give it to them. It might hurt their feelings, but it might save their soul. From eternal damnation. Go ahead. End of eight. Neither shalt thou conceal him. And don't conceal him. Go ahead. But thou shalt surely kill him. Oh, we said we're going to kill a doctrine, right? Not the person. Go ahead. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. Thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear 
and do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. So when you put this truth, that's why this is called the sword of the spirit. Because it cuts asunder all lies. It discerns what is true and what is not true. So when you cut them with this sword, you might deliver, but you cannot spare them. Go to Deuteronomy 17, pick it up at verse 1. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 17, verse 1. <clears throat> All right, go ahead. <clears throat> Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favoredness, for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, he's talking about sacrifices, but you're not supposed to even make any offering to him with anything that has evil favoredness. That is something that has the appearance of evil. Even if it looks a little compromised, you're supposed to step back and say, hmm, shall I or shall I not? Let me discern whether this is of God or not, instead of accepting it. But go ahead. Two, if there be found among you within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman, that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant, and hath gone and served other gods and worshiped them, either the sun or moon or any of the hosts of heaven, which I have not commanded. So now remember this. He said they gone aside, right? And they worship other gods, either sun or moon or any of the hosts of heaven. Now a lot of people going to see this and they're going to say, well, I don't worship the sun. Do you, do you you think you don't? Well, I don't worship the moon. You think you don't. I don't worship any of the hosts of heaven. You think you don't, but you have been deceived. Satan's deception is so thorough that the people that are deceived think they're doing something holy. Hmm. They think they're doing something good. Oh, well, we go out and we feed the homeless this time of year. Well, where were you all the rest of the year? That means that you're a hypocrite, because if you know it to do good and do it not, to him it is sin. Hmm. Starve all year long. Got to wait till one day for you to decide to think about me. <laughs> when the Lord told us, he said, when you have done this for the least of these, you've done it for me. But you wait to December the 25th to think about it. It's a deception. And it's so thorough that he even get the, the parents to teach this stuff to the children before you have any defense against it. You one, two, three years old. Oh, look at the beautiful lights. Look at this, look at that. Oh, you don't have no defense. And you see everybody around you doing the same thing. You're going to partake in it. Oh, there's a man that's going to come down the chimney and bring you toys. Really? But then you tell these lies to these children. When they grow up and lie to you, you mad about it. Hmm. You've been lying to them their whole life. Talking about Easter bunnies and eggs, hey. Hmm. Bunnies don't lay eggs. And none of that has anything to do with the word of God. You've been lied to. And you took that lie and gave it to your children. And they're going to give it to their children. Mm -hmm. So now we see why the Lord say to the third and fourth generation. Well, guess what? We are a hundred generations away. We still making the same mistakes. And we all ate of that fruit. All of us. Mm -hmm. But praise the Lord, because we ain't got to eat it now. Right. That he opened our eyes and showed us the truth of his word. Mm hmm that's a blessing. So you count yourself blessed if you're not given to that deception. But didn't we finish that? Four, we're at verse four. Go ahead. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true, and a thing certain, 
that such abomination is wrought in Israel. Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing so unto thy gates. So he said it's a wicked thing, right? He said it's a wicked thing. Go ahead. Even that man or that woman and shall stone them with, with stones till they die. So he have said this three times already. That that person is supposed to be put to death. So we know that this is something that he is not pleased with. Go to Deuteronomy 32, pick it up at verse 16. Deuteronomy 32, verse 16. <clears throat> All right, go ahead. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Didn't he say he was a jealous God? Yes. He said, they provoked him to jealousy with what? Strange gods. Go ahead. With abominations provoked they him to anger. Now he's angry about it. He's telling us how he's feeling about this. Go ahead. They sacrificed unto devils. To who? To devils. Now, do you, now you might not think that. But before we're done today, you're going to know it for a fact. Go ahead. Not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came up, that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. They done forgot all about the true and living God. They're not mindful, they're not thinking about him. How am I supposed to serve the God that formed me? How does he want me? How does he desire that I serve him. We know that we have to serve him and worship him in sincerity and in truth. You cannot be sincere about a lie. Because as soon as you find out you've been lied to, you hurt. You feel deceived. You feel betrayed. And you get angry. Mm -hmm. Well, we've all been lied to for a long, long time. But go ahead. 19. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. Wait a minute. He didn't say nothing about the, what they're doing, the deeds. He abhorred that. He already told us. But now he's saying how he feel about the people. He's saying how he's feeling about the people that are doing this. He abhorred them. Go ahead. Because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. You see how I say that? Because you provoke the sons and the daughters. How? Because you keep teaching them to serve other gods. Go ahead. 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. Children in whom there's no faith. Faith comes by what? By hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. If you ain't being taught out of this book, you have no faith. Go ahead. 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. You see how you said that? The very things you did to me, that's what you're going to experience. You're going to be provoked to jealousy, and you're going to move you to anger by a foolish nation. Look at where you're at. Look at the decisions that they make. Look at all of the customs and practices that they participate in. Hmm. You think you ain't going to be angry and vexed? Wait till next week. Wait till next week. Hmm. Go to Judges 2, pick it up at verse 11. Judges 2, verse 11. Now, he's going to start to say some names of these gods, and he's going to start to describe the customs of these gods, of serving these gods. Judges 2, verse 11. <clears throat> All right, go ahead. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. So that's one name, Balaam, right? Go ahead. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods, 
of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. They did the very thing he commanded them not to do. Go ahead. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal so and they served Asherah. Baal and Asherah. Those are two other gods. Baalim and Baal, those are sun gods. Astra is the moon goddess. Two names, right? So now, um, can you guys put that uh, diagram up there? Now, this is going to appear in and out of the lesson. I want you guys to make note of these names. Can you guys put it up there? Too bad we ain't got none of that Jeopardy music. <laughs> okay, now, here, here we see. The Lord told us, don't worship any of the hosts of heaven, right? Sun, moon. Or anything. So now you see the names of these gods up there. The male gods are sun gods. The female is the moon gods. <laughs> All right, so now we see that, right? So these are the two names that he named all Baalim, Baal, and Asterisk, right? So let's keep going. Let's see what they did. Go to Ezekiel 8, pick it up at verse 12. You can take that down. We'll put it back up here shortly as we go through all of these names. Ezekiel 8, verse 12. All right, go ahead. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. Go ahead. For they say, The Lord seeth us not, the Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. So this is at the door of the Lord's house. Now he's sitting here weeping for who? A pagan god. And this has something to do with the story of Nimrod and his mother. That's where they get the, the picture. The, uh, they say it's Mary and Jesus, but it's really Madonna. But it comes back to this thing, which is pagan. Remember, the Lord said, you ain't supposed to have no images of nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Nothing. But they had these statues, you know, and they do little deceptive things, make it cry blood and all kind of stuff like that. And people worship them. But go ahead. 15, then said he unto me, hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. You see how these abominations just keep getting greater and greater? Go ahead. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east. You see what they're doing? And they're doing this at the Lord's house. Now remember, Jerusalem is east. Now they got their backs to the Lord, and they're facing the sun. They got their back to the temple, and they are facing east to the sun, and they're worshiping the sun God. Mm. You ever heard of a thing called sunrise service? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Where do you think they got that from? Wow. There's nothing in this book that tells us to participate in a sunrise service. Right. You notice that Satan do everything opposite from the Lord. Sure now the Lord have his, his Sabbaths and his feast days start when? At sundown. Mm-hmm. After going down to the sun. But you can see how his deception works. They think they're doing something oh so holy when really it is an abomination. And they're worshiping these sun gods. But go ahead. 17. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? 
for they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. So now the Lord says something here. He said they filled the land with violence. Now we're thinking, how is this? They just sitting there worshiping the sun. Well, later on in the scripture, we're going to see what violence they filled the land with when we get to the history part of it. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. 18. Therefore, will I also deal in fury. What is he going to do? Deal in fury. Why? Because they're worshiping another God. So you see in how he's feeling, especially this time of year. Mm -hmm. Furious. Go ahead. Mine eyes shall not spare. Wait, didn't he tell us not to do that? He said, you ain't supposed to spare. Go ahead. Neither will I have pity. Didn't he tell us not to have pity on them? Go ahead. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. He said, do not hearken. Now we see that he's not telling us to do something that he's not doing. Now he told us about how we feel about these days. They are an abomination to him. They make him angry. They make him jealous. He is furious. And he said, put these people to death. To put away evil from amongst the land. That's how you feel about it. Well, you might say, well, Brother Mike, I ain't talking about Christmas. We going to see. I ain't talking about Easter. We going to see. That ain't talking about Sunday. We shall see. After all, it is called what? Sunday. Mm -hmm. Sunday service. Sunday sunrise service. Satan's deception is so effective that every day of the week is named after a pagan god. When the Lord created the, the creation, he gave all the days numbers all the way up to number six, did he not? Mm -hmm. Can we not read this? Yes. There's only one day that he named, that he's hallowed, that he's sanctified, is what day? The Sabbath yeah. day. The seventh day of the week. Only day with a name. Mm -hmm. Can you find Sunday in this book? No. Not one time. Mm -hmm. Can you find Christmas in this book? Mm -hmm. Not one time. You can find Easter in here, but it just says that the apostle didn't go to a place because it was Easter. But the Lord not, has not put forth such, not such a commandment for us to do these things. So if they ain't a book in the book, where did they come from? The Lord said, don't add a take away, didn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Look like somebody trying to add. They ain't just adding, they multiplying. Sin and iniquity is what they're doing. But let's keep moving. Go to... Um, Jeremiah 32, pick it up at verse 30. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 32, verse 30. Okay. Go ahead. Jeremiah 32, verse 30. For the children of Israel and the children of Judah have only done evil before me from their youth. For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, saith the Lord. For this city hath been to me as a provocation of mine anger and of my fury from the day that they built it even unto this day, that I should remove it from before my face. Because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Judah, which they have done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets. Wait a minute. So that's all of their leadership, spiritual and social leaders. So if the leader has gone wrong, what are the people going to do? They're going to go wrong. Mm -hmm. When the Lord set judges up over Israel, when the judge was good and he ruled the people with justice and equity, then the people was good. Mm -hmm. But then those judges would die because they are men. Then a wicked judge would rise up and he would do wickedness. And guess what the people did? Wickedness. Mm -hmm. That's why the Lord said, don't put your trust in no man. Go ahead. End of 32. And the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and they have turned unto me the back and not the face, though I taught them rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. See, this is the problem with people. They don't listen. The Lord said that he rose up early teaching them. 
and instructing them. So now when you go out there and you start teaching people and you start instructing them about these things that are abomination, you know what they're going to say? You crazy. The whole world is doing this. What the book tells me, that wide is the way to lead to destruction. Yes. And narrow is the way to lead to light. And there'll be few that find it and go in. Like I said, if you're sitting here and you're getting this word, you're blessed. Because the Lord has opened your eyes and opened your understanding. Well, go ahead. 34. But they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to defile it. Wait a minute. They put these abominations in the Lord's house. That is called by his name. And they did what? To defile it. So if you put this in your house, what are you doing? Same thing. You're like, hey, I ain't worship no, I ain't in my house and worship the Son of God. Like I said, we're going to see. We well, go ahead. 35, and they built the high places of Baal. So there he is again, Baal, go ahead. Which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech. Molech, that's another one. Put that thing back up that, uh, not the picture, yeah, that. So we see that Molech is a sun god. See, all of these different people all over the world had the same customs, and they had God's the same God, just a different name. The customs varied a little bit, but they still worshiping a pagan God. And he said they caused their sons and daughters to pass through the fire. We're going to see what that means. And then we're going to see just how evil these days are. The Lord said they were an abomination unto him, right? Did we finish that? No. Go ahead. Which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind. So he said, I didn't command this, nor did it ever enter into my mind. Remember, the, the Lord is a just God. He is righteous. He is holy. So there is no darkness in him at all. Only light. So this did not come into his mind. But how did it get into the world? And not, not only that. How did it get to become part of Christianity? So-called Christianity, I have to say that. Because true Christianity come out of the word of God. That's where the true, the true Christianity come from. But let's keep going. Did we finish that? End of 35. Go ahead. That they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. So now, we, he's saying this plain and simple. This is what? A sin. What sin it is, is it? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down to serve them. Thou shalt not make any graven image of anything that is in heaven, that is in the earth, or beneath the earth, or that is in the sea. Anything. Jeremiah 19, verse 2. Jeremiah 19, mm -hmm. verse 2. All right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And go forth unto the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is by the entry of the east gate, and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee, and say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, the which whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle. You see how mad he is? He said, I'm going to bring such evil on this place that who, when they hear about it, their ears is going to tingle. That's some real evil. But who is bringing this? The Lord is bringing it. Go ahead. Four, because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burned incense in it unto other gods. He said they have burned incense to this, to them, to other gods. We know how the Lord feel about strange fire. We learned that with Aaron's son, when they bought that strange fire in there and burned it into the Lord. You know what he did? He burned them up. And then told them, don't mourn for them. Because see, when you mourn and you have pity for those that do wickedness, you mm -hmm. condone what they're doing. 
You can sit into what they're doing. You see? So don't feel bad when you check people about these days. Stop compromising. You can't be hot and cold. You got to be one or the other. Mm. The minute you compromise, they're going to hold that against you. And not only that, you're going to walk away from the situation feeling bad. Let them feel bad. You feel good about telling the truth. Did we finish that? Middle of four. Go ahead. Whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. You know, you know why they filled this place with the Because they sacrificed their children. That's why. Go ahead. They have built also the high places of Baal. There he is again. Go ahead. To burn their sons with fire. For burnt offerings unto Baal. That's what it means when he says they cause their children, their sons and daughters to pass through the fire. They sacrifice their children to pagan gods by burning them. That's a terrible thing, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to show you even a greater abomination than that, just like the Lord showed. Them. They killed their children physically. The Lord can raise them children up and put them in the kingdom. Y'all understand that? Because if he could raise up a seed to Abraham out of some stones, he can recover them. Mm. But for the children that we teach these abominations to, before they're having a, a defense against it, and it sets up strongholds in their mind, and they continue to teach these lies to generation to generation, you know what we have done? We have killed our children spiritually. Mm -hmm and they might not recover from it. Because hmm. if they continue on down that road, you know what fire they're going to end up burning in? The lake of fire. And that is forever. Hmm. So you tell me which is the great abomination. It's what we're doing today. You see? So in fact, we are actually working for Satan, serving him, worshiping him, and then sacrificing our children unto him. And the worst part about it is that we don't even know it or think about it. It's a merry time of the year. Hmm. Is it? It wasn't so merry for these children back then, was it? Mm -mm. Go ahead. Which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. He said, I didn't command it, I didn't speak, and he's saying it again. It did not even come into my mind to do this. But we got to ask ourselves, where did this come from? And how did it get into Christianity? How is it so effective that the whole world is accepting it? Let's check something out. We're going to read a little bit of history now. Read that. Mm -hmm. Well, not a little bit. We're going to read quite a bit. <laughs> you got it? Yes. Go so ahead. Molech was the god of the Ammonites, portrayed as a bronze statue with a calf's head adorned with a royal crown and seated on a throne. His Can arms you pull that picture up? Go ahead. His arms were extended to receive the child victims sacrificed to him. Milton wrote that Moloch was a frightening and terrible demon covered with mother's tears and children's blood. Rabbis claim that in the famous statue Moloch, there were seven kinds of cabinets. The first was for flour, the second for turtle doves, the third for an, an eu, the fourth for a ram, the fifth for a calf the sixth for a beef, and the seventh for a child. It is because of this, Moloch is associated with Mithras. You know who that is? If you look up Mithraism, no. <laughs> Mithraism is where you get Sunday worship from. Mithraism is where you get dying and going to heaven. Mithraism is where you get dying and going to hell. 
Sound familiar? Mm. That sounds like the so-called Christianity, don't it? So some of these things you have to research for yourself. Because after all, your salvation is worth it, isn't it? God didn't create us to die. He created us to become like him and mm-hmm. to live forever. So why do we willingly keep killing ourselves? Hmm. Did you finish that? No. Finish it. Moloch is associated with Mithras and his seven mysterious gates with seven chambers. When a child was sacrificed to Moloch, a fire was lit inside the statue. The priest would then beat loudly on drums and other objects so that the cries would not be heard. You see how they did that? This is the practice that they did. Sacrifice burned their children. And then partied while they were burning. Now you see why the Lord was so furious, right? Read this. Just read the highlighted part. December 25th. Whoa, that's next week, ain't it? Next week. Okay. December 25th, what about it? The Roman festival of Saturnalia took place between December 17th and 23rd and honored the Roman god Saturn. There's another god. That's what December 25th is about. They told us what? They lied to us. That's Jesus' birthday. The book don't say when he was born. Right. But we do know that it was a time of year that they weren't in, they weren't, uh, it ain't December. It was warm. They told us that there was three wise men that came with it. The book don't say nothing about three. Lies. It says wise men came to him. Right. And he wasn't a baby in the manger at that time either. Another lie. But let's finish this, man. Dies Natalis Solis Invicti means birthday of the unconquered sun and was held on December 25th when the Romans thought the winter solstice took place and was the birthday of the pagan sun god Mithra. Now that's the birthday of the pagan sun god Mithra. December 25th. What did the book say? That Satan have deceived who? The, the whole world. world. Mm-hmm. What is the whole world going to do December 25th? They're going to cut down all the trees and put them in their house. Mm. They're going to string lights everywhere because that custom came from them being afraid of the dark. Did you finish that? Yes. We'll look at something else. We're just uh, pointing these things out. Mm -hmm. So now, show that uh, list of those gods again. So you can see where their names appear in that list. So now, remember that statue, right? It's a statue that's got his hands extended to receive a child that is to be burned on the inside of him. Remember that. You see the names of them right there. I can't see them, but y'all can see them. Those are the sun gods and the moon god, and then you have Saturn. But they worship Saturn, Jupiter, Mars. But the Lord said that don't be dismayed at the host of heaven. We're not supposed to worship any of the hosts of heaven. But it looks like that's all we've been doing, don't it? Hmm. Read that. Saturnalia, the birthday of the unconquerable sun. So we confirm that in the other, not scripture, other history, right? Same day, go ahead. Saturnalia was once an ancient Roman festival held annually as a devotion to our ancient sun god, Saturn. Saturnalia celebrations were held in late December, leading into the winter solstice. So you hear that word, winter solstice? It's got another title called a Yuletide celebration. Those are pagan things. Go ahead. Saturnalia's festival of lights was the celebration of the coming new year, and the people would shout, Io Saturnalia, or chant in syllables, short I, long O. That sound like happy new year, don't it? The mm-hmm. festival of lights, they extend into the new year. So before you start toasting, think about what you're doing. Hmm. You see why they put all these lights up? Look at them. 
You can be like, oh, they're so beautiful, they're so beautiful. Well, Eve thought Satan was beautiful. Go ahead. During ritual invocations, in time, the festival was eventually moved from the 17th to the 25th and was renamed Dias Natalis Solus Invictus, the birthday of the unconquerable sun. So how many times we got to hear this before we realize that it not, has nothing to do with by the, Jesus? By the Roman Empire. Who did that? The Roman Empire. Hmm. Why are they always the center of everything? Question. Hold on to that question to next week, and you're going to get the answer. Go ahead. Saturnalia, held in mid-December, is an ancient Roman pagan festival honoring the agricultural god Saturn. Saturnalia celebrations are the source of many of the traditions we now associate with Christmas. I didn't have to say that, did I? That's history. So what, in fact, are they doing? Celebrating and worshiping the sun. How did the Lord feel about this when Israel was doing that? He said it was a greater abomination. How does he feel now that the whole world is doing it? Hmm. Go ahead. The pagan celebration of Saturn, the Roman god of agriculture and time, began as a single day. But by the late Republic, that's 133 to 31 BC. It had expanded to a week long festival beginning December 17th. A whole week. Wow. Go ahead. On the Julian calendar, which the Romans used at the time, the winter solstice fell on December 25th. And it fell on December the 25th. And they never alter the day, do they? They never alter the day at all. Check that out. Moloch. Pull that other picture up. Also known as Baphomet, Lucifer, What's Baal. What's his name? Moloch. What is his name? Moloch. Okay. No, what does it say up here? Set. Set slash Saturn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now read that. Also known as Baphomet, Lucifer, Baal. So now we see that these names are synonymous with what? That's not the picture. <laughs> Man, you're giving them, you're taking the punchline away from everything. <laughs> Show the other picture. <laughs> the picture of the statue extending his hand to receive the child. There you go. So this is what they practiced, right? Read that. Moloch was a Canaanite version of the Egyptian god Set. The god Set was a homosexual god Wait of Wait a evil. minute. This is the Christmas god? Hmm. Because remember, Molech and Mithra is the same God, different name, hmm. sun God. The sun God's birthday is when? December 25th. Hmm. So-called Christmas. What did he practice? He was worshipped during ceremonies that involved human sacrifice. We see that, right? Go ahead. Cannibalism. What else? And homosexual orgies. Wait a minute. Christmas? Now we're seeing what this is about and why the Lord abhorred it so much. Hmm. Go ahead. As the god of destruction, he became the god of the Egyptian military. In ancient Rome, he was worshipped as the god Saturn by the Roman military. Same god, different name. Go ahead. Often with baptisms by blood. Thus we see that Saturn, Set, Saturn, Moloch, etc., was worshipped by Solomon and his wives, as he grew old and senile. This involved heterosexual sex orgies, Ashtaroth, homosexual so now sex we see orgies. The other god, right? Ashtaroth. That's the female moon god on that list. We'll come back to that list later, but go ahead. Homosexual sex orgies, Baal, Set, Saturn, Moloch, human sacrifice, Moloch, and even cannibalism, Set, Moloch. So this is the practices that they did on this day. Don't seem so holy, do we? No. Mm -mm. But this is the origin of what we call Christianity. So you can see why the book said that Satan had deceived the whole world. 
The scripture says that the whole world lie in what? Wickedness. Mm -hmm. But now we see why. Now they try to clean it up, but you can't clean up anything that has what? Evil favoredness or have the appearance of evil. Did you finish that? Go down to the next one. So now, it said it was a week long, right? Let's see what else they were doing mm -hmm. during this time. What does it say? Moloch was represented as a huge bronze statue with the head of a bull. The see mm -hmm. You see the picture? Go ahead. The statue was hollow, and inside there burned a fire which colored the Moloch a glowing red. So he got so hot, he was red hot. A glowing red. Mm. Go ahead. Children were placed on the hands of the statue. Through an in ingenious system, the hands were raised to the mouth as if Moloch were eating, and the children fell into the fire where they were consumed by the flames. The people gathered before Moloch were dancing on the sounds of flutes and tambourines to drown out the screams of the victims. So now, you see that on that picture, right? He's sitting on a little chair and he's got his hand extended to receive the child, whom the parent brought up to this statue to have him sacrificed. Now you can show the other picture. Look familiar? Why he wears red and why they always bring in the child to sit on his lap. The same God. These are the practices that we're doing and we have no knowledge of what we're doing. And we keep teaching this to our children. I have never seen a child happy to go sit on that yeah. man's lap. Yeah, that's right. They be screaming and hollering. Right, right. No. But the parent forced them to do it. Mm -hmm. And then they compromise him saying, he gonna give you a gift. Mm. You sit on his lap. You provoke them to make the Lord angry. And every year they think, oh, boy, I'll sit on his lap. He, he gonna give me a gift. You're teaching them to compromise. You're teaching them to pity. You're teaching them to consent to this, which is an abomination. Hmm. It's a similitude of them burning their child to that God. And they say, well, you can't take Christmas away from the children. I say, knowing what it is, how dare you give it to them? Mm -hmm. How dare you turn your child over to that? Keep doing it in the last days. It ain't going to be the children burning in the fire. Did we finish that? Yes. This is the last. We're going to get back to the scripture after this, though. Mm -hmm. What does that say? It says, esoteric meaning of Christmas and the winter solstice. So now, we know winter solstice, solstice. Christmas is synonymous what? With the birthday of the sun god, which is Molech, which they did, child sacrifice, all kind of abomination, abominable acts. I'll put it like that. What did they do? Says so the origins of Christmas predate Christianity through the pagan holiday called Saturnalia. So this was a, around before anything we was doing. It predates Christianity. This started in Babylon. Hmm. Go ahead. Which was a week long of lawlessness. A from, week long of lawlessness. Remember what he said? They filled the land with what? Violence. Hmm. Go ahead. From December. December 17th through December 25th. Go ahead. Then honored, honored, honored Saturn and included human sacrifice. Human sacrifice. Intoxication. Whatever. Intoxication. Naked caroling. Naked caroling. And rape. And rape. During these seven days, there were no punishments for breaking any laws. Don't that sound like a movie? Yes. For seven days, there ain't no punishment for breaking any laws. The purge. Go ahead. According to Roman law. According to Roman law. That was the law. The scripture tells us that they take iniquity and do what? Frame it with the law. Mm -hmm. 
We good, man. You don't have to. I said it. You want that? Go ahead. In the year 4 AD, Christianity adopted Saturnalia with the hopes that they could convert the pagans. You see how you said that? It looked like the pag pagans converted them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They adapted it. They didn't, we're going to see why they adapted it in part two of this. But it ain't got nothing to do with converting anybody to righteousness. But let's get back to the book. Go to Ezekiel 16, pick it up at verse 20. So now we see the origins of these things. And knowing what they are, how can we move forward and continue to practice it? Because remember, the title of the lesson is The Fruit of Lies. Satan's doctrine, and it is through his doctrine that he have deceived the whole world. Ezekiel 16, verse 20. Go ahead. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast born unto me. Wait a minute. These sons and these daughters that we are blessed with are born unto who? The Lord. To the Lord. Go ahead. And these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredom a small matter? He said, you think this is a small matter? So we cannot afford to take this lightly. Knowing what they did, knowing what the origins and what, what the true meaning of this is. Go ahead. 21. That thou hast slain my children and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for we, them. We know what that means now, don't we? You burned them. So we can't do anything that's a similitude of that. Or a new time, a new day representation of that very thing. We can't consent to it. Mm -hmm. We can't pity it. Can't compromise. Go to Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57, pick it up at verse 3. You got it? Yes. Isaiah 57, verse 3. All right, go ahead. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer, and the whore. He's talking about the people who practice these things. Sons of the sorcerers, seed of adulterers, and the whore. We're going to look at this whore in part two. But she's been around for a while. We know what they do. Go ahead. Four, against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of transgression? A seed of falsehood. He said they are children of transgression. A seed of falsehood. And we were all given over to this. Go ahead. Five. Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree. Wait a minute. Inflaming ourselves with idols under every green tree. Ever green tree. You get it? Mm -hmm. And what do they put underneath it? The little gifts. The scripture tell you that a gift compromises you. And to get that gift, what do you got to do? You got to bow down and get it, don't you? Yes. But somebody got to bow down and put it under there because it's a lie. And they're going to tell you that some man flew all over the world in one night and gave gifts to everybody in every house around the world on flying reindeer. Mm. Lies. Fables deceptions and they do all this to do what to draw you away from your God when they get that evergreen tree what do they put on the top of it a star, star. Mm -hmm. oh that's Jesus star when he, we gonna see what that was <laughs> that is how you take the Lord's name in vain by taking his name and by attaching it to something that don't mean nothing. Hmm. It's vanity. Hmm. But go ahead. Middle of flock five. Slaying the children in the valleys under the clefts of the rocks. 
among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. They, they are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. You done poured out a drink offering? Go ahead. Thou hast offered a meat offering. And a poured a meat offering. Go ahead. Should I receive comfort in these? He says, shall I receive comfort in these? The Lord don't want nothing to do with this. Now, they're going to offer you a meat offering and a drink offering. They're going to say, we got Christmas dinner. Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you going? They're going to ask you to. Oh, it's just family time. We're just getting together. All the family going to be there. You going to join them in the lake of fire too? Because that's where that doctrine will get you. Satan is already judged to go into the lake of fire. But he wants all his people there with him. And who are his people? The people that serve him. That's who they are. Finish that. Man. Seven. Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. Even thither wentest thou up to offer sacrifice. So they did this and they sacrificed their children. Right? Go ahead. Behind the doors also and the post hast thou set up thy remembrance. He said behind the door and on the post you set up your remembrance. Show that picture. You know what they use to do that nowadays? You see them at funerals all the time. And you see them around this time of year all the time. That's what it's talking about. You notice it's in the circle to represent the sun, God. Look up the origins of these things. These are practices that people are doing today and they have no clue. Nowadays, they'll put them on anything. They'll put it on a car, mm -hmm. on the back of a truck, Right. On a bicycle. Mm -hmm. They'll put it on an ice cream truck if they can. <laughs> this is what they're doing. But it's all paganism. Things wherein there is no profit. Go ahead. Middle of eight. For thou hast discovered thyself to another than me, and art gone up. Thou hast enlarged thy bed and made thee a covenant with them. Thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it. And thou wentest to the king with ointment, and didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers far off, and didst debase thyself even unto hell. You hear see what the Lord is saying? You keep practicing this, you are debasing yourself even unto hell. But we know this is talking about the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Well, let's keep going. Go to Jeremiah 10. Pick it up at verse 1. Jeremiah 10, verse 1. Jeremiah 10, verse 1. Don't jump the gun this time, man. <laughs> Go ahead. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O who, house of Israel. Who's doing the talking here? The Lord, Lord. is doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen. What did he say? Learn, Learn not the way of the heathen. Not the way of the heathen. Heathen just means stranger mm -hmm. or people of other nations. Mm -hmm. Remember, the Lord said, Don't do these customs of the people round about you, even from one end of the earth, even to the other. Don't do it. Go ahead. And be not dismayed at the sign of the signs of the heathen. And don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven. The sun, the moon, the stars, the planets. And they had this thing called, is it astrology or astronomy? No. Astrology. It's the one where they look, they, 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 they have to make sure Jupiter and Mars is aligned before they go outside. That one. A zodiac. Zodiacs, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's pagan. That's why they call them horoscopes. Because people wouldn't, they wouldn't make a move until they checked the alignment of the planets. But the Lord said, don't be dismayed by this. Don't follow the ways of the heathen. Don't be dismayed at them. Now, this is saying, this is a picture's worth, what, a million words, a thousand words. Mm -hmm. 
A thousand words? A thousand, yes. Because a lot of people read this and they just don't get it. But we're going to understand it. And like I said, a picture is worth a thousand words. You can pull it up now. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 3. It says, for the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. So the customs of the people are vain. Customs, vain. They are lies that have been passed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. The custom changed, but the meaning of them did not. Mm. Go ahead. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. So somebody went out to the forest and he cut down the tree. What do you see in that picture? A guy with axe, right? Mm -hmm. Go to the next one. What is he doing? Cutting the tree down in the forest, right? With an axe. Go ahead. Four, they deck it with silver and with gold. They do what? Deck it with silver and with gold. What do you see them doing? Now, they ain't using real silver and gold because we too broke for that now. <laughs> but they got the representation of it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. So they have to fasten with hammers because they didn't cut it down. They can't stand up by itself. So now what they got to do back in the old days, they would like get these two sticks. And they would hammer a nail into it so it could stand up. They would make a cross at the bottom of it. But nowadays you can just go to the store and buy a stand. But guess what? You still have to fasten it mm. so that it could stand up. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Five, they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. You see what they got to do? They got to carry that. So you can't say to the Lord, this tree just appeared in my house. <laughs> you went out there, you cut it down. It was fine while it was in the forest. It was doing what the Lord created it to do. You made it an idol and a custom practice. Pagan practice and custom. There's only one time a year that they do this. One time. They don't do it in June. They don't do it in the spring, do they? When do they do this? December 25th. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil Neither also is it in them to do good. So don't be, this is pagan. It's an idol. It is nothing but what it was created to be. The paganism and the idolatry is in our mind. The tree was good until we cut it down and made it an idol and used it for a pagan practice and called it a Christmas tree. Remember he said, ever, every green tree, evergreen tree. Mm -hmm. That's the only tree they use for that. So that cannot be denied that this is talking about this practice. Learn not the way of the heathen, for the custom of the people are vain. Nothing, mean nothing, has no righteousness in it. The Lord don't like it. He abhor it. Remember the people who made them, did them custom practice. He said he abhorred them also. Mm. Go to Jeremiah 7, pick it up at verse 18. Jeremiah 7, verse 18. Got it? Yes. Go ahead. The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire. And the women need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. Oh, but it's a family time. Mm. We, the whole family doing this. Mm. And they made these cakes to who? The queen, queen of, heaven. of heaven. Now you can show it. Mm -hmm. I'll show you what she looked like. You recognize that? I told you the whole world, the book said the whole world was deceived. What else did they do? Go ahead. 
and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. It's provoking him to anger. He's angry. So the next time you want some coffee, think about where you're going before you take a sip. Go ahead. 19. Do they provoke me to anger, he saith said, the Lord? That's a question, ain't it? Go ahead. Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? You think these people ain't confused? They're going to be in the store going crazy, mm. trying to buy the latest thing. Mm. And they're going to go broke. And after it's over, they're going to be so mad and frustrated because they broke. But then they're going to start preparing for another day, which is this day. We go to the last two million years. Mm -hmm. Page 84. 84. What does this say? It says the Jews were particularly scornful of the Syrian religion centered as it was around a fertility goddess. So this is a fertility goddess. Go ahead. Whose worship demanded sacrifice, temple prostitutes. Wait a minute. Sacrifice and temple prostitutes. Go ahead. And orgiastic rites, devotees of a star, were stimulated into wild sexual abandonment by music, wine, and incense. However, there was often a good deal of license among the Jews themselves, and many writings of the prophets reproached the people for imitating the pagan practices of their neighbors and exhort them instead to hold fast to their God. So that's what we're supposed to be doing, to hold fast to our God. You know what another day of celebration for this God is? Easter. Mm -hmm. They said that's to commemorate the Lord's death and resurrection. Have nothing to do with him. Period. And the proof is in the scripture. He said he's going to be in the grave how many days? Three days and three nights. You cannot get three days and three nights from Good Friday to Easter Sunday. I don't care what type of mathematics you use, what type of astrophysics you use, you cannot get it. He said that is the sign to prove who he is. He's going to be in the grave three days and three nights. But let's keep moving. Did you finish that? Yes. Okay. So now, go to uh, Jeremiah 2. Pick it up at verse 8. Jeremiah 2, verse 8. Go ahead. Jeremiah 2, verse 8. Go ahead. The priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. So this is what the priest said. Where's the Lord? Mm -hmm. And the people who handled the law didn't know him. Now, you can do a fact check on this if you want to. Go to a Sunday preacher. And tell him what these days mean. And see what his response is. I ain't going to tell you what it is. You do this to prove this to yourself. But go ahead. The pastors also transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by Baal. And walked after things that do not profit. So he said the priests and the prophets. The pastors did this. Go ahead. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. He said he'd do this to what? The third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Go ahead. Ten. For pass over the isles of Chittim, and see, and send unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. So now he said you do this diligently, and see if there be such a thing as this. What is it? 
11. Hath the nation changed their gods? Have they changed their gods? No, they have not. And they don't even know it. Go ahead. Which are yet no gods? And are there God any God? No. It's an idol, and an idol is nothing. Go ahead. But my people have changed their glory from that which doth not profit. So we change our glory and serving the true and living God, keeping his commandments, keeping his feast days for this garbage. And I said it like it is. I could have called it something else, but it is a Sabbath. They have not changed their gods. They changed the custom. They changed the practice. But they still are worshiping the sun god, the moon goddess, Mithra, Molech. Put those names back up there for me. Man. The queen of heaven, Astarte, Diana. One that I haven't put up there, that I should have put up there, is... Allah. That comes from the word Alana, which is, guess what? Moon goddess. Why do you think they have a moon and a crescent star? Paganism. Don't be dismayed by the host of heaven and the signs of heaven. He said, you're not supposed to bow down and worship them, nor serve them. Go to Psalms 106, pick it up at verse 34. Psalms 106, verse 34. Keep that picture up there. Go ahead. I know it says something different on there. Psalms 106, verse 34. <laughs> Go ahead. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. See, the Lord told them when you go into these nations, destroy them. Tear it down, burn it up to where there's nothing left, so somebody could come along and say, here is this people. This is how they worship their gods. He didn't want nothing left of them. Go ahead. But were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. See, this is what we did. We mingled among these people and we learned their works. Mm. Go ahead. And they served their idols. And we served their idols. Go ahead. Which were a snare unto them. So if there was a snare unto us then, you think it's not a snare unto us now. Yes, it is. Hmm. It is a snare. Go ahead. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. They did what? Sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Because remember, you know, Satan was kicked out, but all the angels was kicked out with him. All of them are called devils. We see the names of them up there, and we learn the practice of them, where the origins of them. But they all trickle down to be who? The sun god, whose birthday is December 25th. Go ahead. That was 37. Keep reading. Okay. 38. And shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. So that's the result of it. So why, why should we keep handing these customs down to our children? Why should we continue to promote and consent to these customs, knowing what they mean? Go to Amos 5, pick it up in verse 21. Amos 5, verse 21. You got it? Yes. Go ahead. I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Go ahead. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them, neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Go ahead. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy viol. The Lord is mad at us. I ain't accepted no offer from you. I don't like none of the songs you singing mm -hmm. or the music you playing. Go ahead. 24, but let judgment run down as waters, and righteousness is a mighty stream. Go ahead. Have you offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? And we know what happened to Israel during them 40 years, right? They made a calf. Mm. 
took off all the earrings and the, and the jewelry and made a calf and bowed down and worshiped it and proclaimed a feast of the Lord to it. Go ahead. 26, but ye have borne the tabernacle of your Molech and Chion, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. So this is why they put a star on top of that tree. Same God, sun God. This is his custom. This is practices they did to worship him. Let's see who star it really is. You, got, you finished that? Yes. We did finish. Okay. Go to Acts 7, pick it up at verse 42. Acts 7, verse 42. You got it? Yes. All right, go ahead. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. So he gave them up to worship the host of heaven. You want to do this? I'm going to let you do it. Go ahead. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Now, we just read that, didn't we? And he talked about they had a, a God who had a star. Go ahead. 43. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch. Sun God, right? Go ahead. And the star of your God, Remphan. And the star of your God, Remphan. Another sun God. Pull up that. Let's see what this star looked like. That's the star of Rembrandt. That's something that they found, some artifact that they found that was made showing the worship of Rembrandt. You see his star? How many points it got? How many points you see on that star? Six. How many triangles you see on the star? Six. How many signs, sides do it have? Six. That sound familiar? Six, six, six. But this is the star of their God, Rembrandt, hmm. that they put on the top of their Christmas tree on his birthday, hmm. which is December 25th. Just something to think about. Go to Jeremiah 16, pick it up at verse 19. Let me finish that or no? Yeah, go ahead, finish it. 40, yes, middle of 43, figures which he made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. So we made these figures to worship them. And he said, I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Are we not beyond Babylon now? Yes. We way beyond Babylon. Generations away from it. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 16, verse 19. Jeremiah 16, verse 19. You got it? Yes. Go ahead. <clears throat> o Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. So he is your strength and your fortress and your refuge in the day of affliction. And you're going to be afflicted next week. Go ahead. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth. Everybody going to come from all over the, earth, all over the world. And what are they going to say? Go and ahead. shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies. They inherited lies. So if they had lies, what do we have? Lies. What is the fruit of lies? Deception and destruction. Mm. Things wherein there's no profit. Remember that scripture said they filled the land with violence. And we see what the outcome of that is. Ain't nothing so merry. This is the, they had the most, highest crime rate, highest insurance claims, mm -hmm. highest accidents on the street, family, what they call that, domestic violence, depression, suicide. Mm -hmm. The highest during this time of year. What's so merry about it? Go ahead. Vanity and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods? That's, that's making a statement, ain't it? You make you a god and bow down and worship it. If you got to make your god, it ain't a god. 
Go ahead. 21. Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. He said, I'm going to cause them to know. And this is what we have to take upon ourselves to cause the whole world to know the truth. Don't conceal. Don't consent. Don't pity. Tell them the truth. Go ahead. I will cause them to know mine hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord. So when you tell them the truth, that is what you're teaching them. Who is the true and living God? Mm -hmm. Who created everything that we see? Who gave you the air that you breathe? Who even gave you your children? Go to 1 Corinthians 10, pick it up in verse 19. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 19. All right, go ahead. What say I then, that the idol is anything? Is the idol anything you had to make it? It's vanity. Go ahead. Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is in anything. Go ahead. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. You understand that? The things that they make and they offer to their God is a sacrifice unto devils. Go ahead. And not to God. And not to God. Go ahead. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. And he don't want you to have fellowship with devils. So when they ask you, you coming to Christmas dinner? What's the answer? Now understand this. Go ahead. 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You can't do both. Either you're going to serve him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. You're going to serve him in sincerity and in truth. Or you're going to turn yourself or compromise yourself to lies and deception, iniquity and sin. It's one or the other. Pick which table you eat from very carefully because your salvation depends on it. Go ahead. Middle of 21. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. You can't take part in both. They ask you, read that scripture to them and tell them to make their decision. Go to 2 Peter 2, verse 1. 2 Peter 2, verse 1. You don't want that 22. Is that on there? Go ahead, read it. Verse 22, go ahead. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Do you? Are we stronger than he? Are you? It's a question you ask yourself before you sit down and eat at that table. 2 Peter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. You got it? Yes. Go ahead. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. And there is. Are they all over the place? Go ahead. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. They bring in damnable heresies. Go ahead. Even denying the Lord... That bought them. They deny the Lord that bought them. You know how they deny him? Because they say, they say he was born on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday. You're telling him. You did not spend three days and three nights in the grave as you said. Therefore, you are not the Christ that you proclaim to be. That's what that doctor says. Go ahead. End of one. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. Go ahead. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. That means that many are going to follow their destructive ways. Look at the whole world. Look at it. Is the book not lying? It's, it's not lying. Right. The whole world lies in wickedness. All of them practices of those sun gods you see in the world today. Remember what they practice? Homosexuality, mm -hmm. orgies, all of these things. Do you not see that? All the lascivious, you can't even turn on the TV. You can't even go to the store or walk in the airport without seeing it. Right. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And the way of truth will be evil spoken of. You go to somebody, you tell them these things are pagan, that they're not a God, that Sunday is not God's day, that Christmas is an abomination. They're going to say you part of a cult. That's what they're going to say. Right. Then they call Jesus a devil. Mm -hmm. You preaching the same thing he preaching. What do you think they're going to say to you? They're going to call you a devil. But we've proven who we serve and who we worship. Who in the cult? This is how you discern what is godly and what is ungodly. By the word of God. Go ahead, finish that. Three, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words... Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Through covetousness... And feigned words, that feign mean made up, lies, yeah. fairy tales. Mm -hmm. And they're going to provoke you to covetousness. What you want for Christmas? What you Look at all the commercials, mm. all the advertisements. That's what it's about, to make you covet. Go ahead. Make merchandise of you. And they're going to make merchandise of you. All they want you for is to try to get the money out of your pocket. That's it. Because if you truly and sincerely love somebody and honor them, you don't need money. You don't need gifts. Hmm. Love is what? The keeping of God's commandments. That's how you love them. But they're trying to throw that away. Remember, they celebrated a week of lawlessness. Mm -hmm. All of that was against God's commandments. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Middle of three, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. And their damnation slumbereth not. Something to think about. Let's go to the last two million years, page 44. Let's mm -hmm. see what this is talking about. We only got two more places after this, y'all. I know y'all got some Christmas shopping to do. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up now. Wait a minute. <laughs> you said 44. Y'all got to get ready for Sunday dinner tomorrow. I know y'all know. <laughs> Believe it not. Go ahead. You got it? Yes. Go ahead, read that. Remember these... Uh, he's, he was talking about these prophets and priests and all this. Look at what this, this is how this became part of so-called Christianity. What does it say? Their mission was largely successful, and by the middle of the 7th century, paganism was dwindling in England. Worship of the old gods did not die out at once. Gregory himself advised his missionaries to leave the pagan shrines alone. He, Gregory, who is that? Ain't he with the Romans? <laughs> Romans, yeah. He said, hey, leave these pagan shrines alone. But remember, he said with feigned words, they want to make merchandise of you. Hmm. Go ahead. And to try and introduce Christian worship only gradually alongside pagan practices. So they said, well, we're we not going to utterly get rid of them. We're going to just teach this alongside of it. You know what the Lord told Israel to do when they went into the land? Kill them. Destroy them utterly. Hmm. That there not be not even a sign of them left. This is what they decided to do. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This mingling of Christianity and paganism. Wait a minute. They mingled it. Christianity and paganism. Go ahead. Is the reason why Christ's birthday is celebrated on December 25th. That's the reason that it's celebrated December 25th. 25th. But the, we know what that day is all about, don't we? Mm -hmm. We know what all the customs are about. I mean, if you want to do that, be truthful with yourself. Mm. Don't lie and use the Lord's name in vain. Did you finish that? No. 
Go ahead. December 25th, the date of the pagans' winter festival. And we know what that festival consisted of. But look at the whole world is going to do this. Mm -hmm. the next week, the whole world going to lose their mind. They're going to pretend to love people that they hate. <laughs> when you shouldn't be hating nobody at all. Go to Hosea 10. Pick it up at verse 1. Hosea 10, verse 1. Next week when we get to Part two, we will continue on with Satan's organization. Right now, we're just seeing what his doctrine is, how he used it, how he mixed lies with the truth to snare your soul. Now, this is what, he's, this is what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. Israel is an empty vine. Where are you? Are you 10 and 12? I'm sorry. 10 verse 12. But that is true. <laughs> A vine when you got no fruit on it. We all know how the Lord felt when he came up on that fig tree and didn't have no fruit. Verse 12, go ahead. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. So now he says, sow to yourselves in righteousness. Right? If you sow something, you're doing some work. Work. In righteousness. Go ahead. Reap in mercy. And you will get mercy. The Lord have mercy on thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Break up your fallow ground. Now he said break up your fallow ground. That's your heart. Go ahead. For it is time to seek the Lord. And seek the Lord in sincerity and in truth. Not according to customs. Not according to pagan religions or pagan customs. Go ahead. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Go ahead. You have plowed wickedness. We have plowed wickedness for generations. Even we ourselves have done the same things. But the Lord shined that light on us and woke us up. And showed us the error of our ways. And taught us how to worship him. How to serve him. Go ahead. You have reaped iniquity. So we plow wickedness, and guess what we reaped? Iniquity. Like I said back in the Garden of Eden, there was not a fruit, a literal fruit. It was the fruit of lies that they ate. Go ahead. You have eaten the fruit of lies. So the book said it. Go ahead. Because thou didst trust in thy way. We trust in our own way. Go ahead. In the multitude of thy mighty men. And all of these men that are renowned, the priests, the prophets, the princes, the kings, all of your leadership, whether spiritual or civic. And the Lord told you, don't put your trust in no man in whom there is no help. My pastor said, you better check him. <laughs> Because he's lying, and the truth ain't in him. Especially if he's speaking against the commandments. Let's go to the last place. Joshua 24, verse 14. So we all have eaten of the fruit of lies. And it's through Satan's doctrine that he have deceived the whole world. And that's an absolute. And to where you bring somebody the truth and it's evil spoken of. Joshua 24, verse 14. Go ahead. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. So the book is saying that. Fear him. And if you fear him, you keep his commandments. If you love him, you keep his commandments. And he said in his commandments, thou shalt have no other gods. Don't serve them. Don't bow down to them. Go ahead. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. He said, put this stuff away and serve the Lord. Don't keep doing the things your fathers did. Go ahead. 15. 
And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. And see, this is what we have to tell them when we bring the truth to them. Do it seem evil unto you to serve the true and living God? Hmm. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? The true Jesus, the real one? Not that fake one. Hmm. Not that other one. Does it seem evil to you to serve him? Go ahead. Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. So we see who these gods were. Pagan gods, female gods and male gods, sun gods, moon gods. Lord said, we're not supposed to bow down to him, no worship any of the host of heaven. But we got a choice to make because we can't eat at the Lord's table and Satan's table. Mm. But this is what we have to tell him. Go ahead. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Plain and simple. Yeah. Amen. Plain and simple. And don't be scared about it. Don't pity. Don't consent. Don't compromise. Because after all, the Lord said it is an abomination. And he is angry about it. So I thank everybody for listening. I pray we all got some understanding. <laughs>